What's up, Flunky Force? It's Game Flunky here, and today I bring you another video of Divinity Original Sin 2. If you want to check out the previous one, I'll leave a link in the description below. The previous one was talking about the broad uh, spectrum of what the character customization was like. And today, what we're going to be discussing is some of the classes that Divinity Original Sin 2 provides. Okay, over the course of the next couple of days, I'll touch up on each of these classes, their play styles, and what you can do with them, in my own opinion. Now, this is not the, considered the meta of the game because it is in its alpha state. And everybody knows when you go through alpha, beta, and full release, the game does change along with its meta and its builds. So bear that in mind as we progress through to full release. Of course, my opinions and styles and may change. So bear that in mind. So we'll just go with the first one I see, Enchanter. Prefers to turn the tide of battle from afar, of manipulating foes with powerful magic. Three of his pri primary abilities are Electric Discharge, jump from target to nearby enemies, dealing 16 to 18 air damage to each. His special is 100% chance to set stun for one turn, takes one memory slot. Action point cost for two, armor check, magic armor, and properties, three turns to cool down. All right, let's talk about some of these things that we should get into real quick. Now, the 16 to 18 air damage, it just unless you're finding something that's either strongest air or it's uh, can nullify air, which you, you probably will more than likely run into that. But we won't worry about it today unless we're going into a combat and I need to show you how to deal with that. Because, you know, obviously, hopefully you have other characters in your group that can nullify that sort of effect. But the one thing we want to touch it to is the special, the armor check, and properties. Now, the special says 100% chance to stun for one turn with memory slots. Memory slots is what you're able to equip at the time. Now, memory slot is something I have to look into further, but I think there's the ability of what allows you to equip at certain moments. Now, armor check is, like I said before in the previous video, is that if you get attacked somebody with a magical spell of any kind, it goes through a quote-unquote check. What that means is if the person's magical armor is high enough to A, take off some damage, or B, or same time, sorry, could nullify the uh, special effect, in this case, 100% chance to stun. Does that mean that every time they hit you with that ability, or you, if you hit someone with that ability, that it's going to stun? No, because if their armor, magic armor, is high enough, it can either A, lower the chances, or B, totally knock out the chance of you stunning that person or that creature, and also keep in mind with the high magic armor, it knocks down the damage of the 16 air damage or 16 to 8 air damage that this ability can apply. So keep that in mind. What should you do in those situations? Don't hit anybody, anybody with high air damage. This is really meant for crowd control. Like they said, manipulating enemies from afar. The best thing to do is when you're using these type of abilities is set it up to benefit you. In my play style, when I'm playing games like Dragon Age, if I have a heavy hitter that's a glass cannon that can't be in the front lines, I move the pieces or the players or the characters around to benefit that move set. So I'll have it so that maybe, all right, if they're weak against air or the air damage that I'm going to provide is very strong, then I'll set them up. In this game, you can do that to a T. Now with air though, the specialty though, it would, because it jumped from near from target enemy, from target to nearby enemy, that provides that more of an effect control. That's why I said before, setting it up and making it perfect. Now, before we get into it, we'll, well, when we get into it, I'll sh showcase this real quick. And then we have Hail Strike. Icicle, sorry, Icicle, blah, blah, blah. Icicles that fall, fall from the sky, chilling enemies and dealing 16 to 18 water damage. They create ice surfaces while, while where they hit the ground. 100% chance to set chill for two turns, one memory slot, one extra point cost, and magic armor. Uh, two meter explode radius and three. All right, so basically, just as before, now this is like the other one, but the difference is instead of stunning them, it creates an ice patch on the ground, which is really good. This has two two effects actually. This has two properties you need to keep in effect or keep in your mind. One, when it freezes the ground, if an enemy or anyone crosses through it and they don't meet the check, there's a possibility that they're gonna flip and fall down. And I said before in the previous video, when you're knocked down, you, you take more damage, a lot more damage. So that's good, that's good. Because the way the game works is this as well. If you're fighting AI or players, I would assume a player wouldn't do this, but when you're fighting AI, they're built to that, when they see that ice patch, unless they know they're gonna pass through it, they won't, they'll walk around it. So you're like, all right, well, John, they kind of walked around it. Well, yeah, that sucks, but it doesn't if you know what you're doing. Yeah, okay, set it up so if they walk around, set them up to a trap. You can do that, you can set traps. 
So just because they don't walk into what right there in front of them, they're smart. They'll walk around. Like for instance, I had one where I was fighting goblins on the first game of the original or Divinity Original Sin, the first one, where they would walk around the giant ice patch that I had created. Well, they ne they bottleneck themselves on the side. All right, so cool. I would just hit a giant fire spell at them or le release a volley of arrows, and I would hit them all at once and just dwindle their numbers. So keep that in mind. The neat thing too is when they hit that ice patch on the ground. Because they're passing over it and they're getting knocked down, I think it also set a frozen state. But I don't know. Yeah, chilled. Chilled for two turns. I think chilled makes it easier to be frozen, too. So, be careful. There. I think chilled is frozen, if I'm right. Restoration. Restore vitality of a target character. Also cures poison and bleeding. Self-explanatory. You can accidentally target enemies, too. Keep that in mind. And each of these have cooldowns, too. Three turns, two, three turns, and four turns. So best thing to do is she has, or her male, female, doesn't matter. They have to stay in the back. One, they're glass cannons. Two, because of the fact... Oh, they got a rogue and scholar? That's what their class fight is? Anyway, because they are um, glass cannons, they have to stay in the back. And the fact that they, these, some, their primary abilities starting off with have a very long cooldown. Oh, my bad. So we'll go to customize. The primary stat attributes you need to keep in mind is intelligence and wits. Intelligence determines your accuracy with intelligence-based weapons and improves the damage of elemental nec necromancy and summoning spells. Adds one point for 15% damage bonus. Wits. Wits affect your critical chance, initiative, magic armor, and your ability to detect traps and find hidden treasures. Adds one point to boost critical chance by 2.5% and gain plus 2.5 in initiative. Now, initiative... What was initiative again? Right, let's go over here. Uh... Oh, that's probably back at the... What you call it? Alright, so they basically said, so they got 12 in finesse, 12 in intelligence, and 12 in wins. Like I've always told you guys, stick with the meta that you're with, and that's what we're going to focus on, because that's the enchanter. Alright. Enchanter wields a wand, single-handed weapon. So that's going to have for 4% damage increased. Alright. That's not too much, like, in my other uh, game, I actually took away from this and applied it to, like, Aerothurgy or Hydrophysist. But that's up to you how you want to play. I can't... I know st staves uh, have special abilities that when you... you no, know, actually wands do. Wands have the ability to cast magic from them. Staves, you actually have to hit somebody with them. I think. I could be wrong. No, staves actually... In the first one, staves has special spells that go with them. Wands uh, just casted the magic from afar. So they're kind of like the same thing. The difference is staves actually... You have to hit the ability to use it and uses action points. Same with wands, but the wands you don't have to actually use action points. You just hit the attack button. Which is left click, so that's the cool part. Now they could have changed that, like I said, we'll test it out in about a second. Alright, Aerothurgy, which is like healing spells and really good control spells as well. Or this, sorry, is this healing? Yeah, this is healing, sorry. And control spells. Enchanters is all about buffing your party while maintaining control of the battlefield. Simple as that. Alright, so even though they call it electric discharge, it discharges air damage. Oh, you know where I messed up at too? Alright, so they call it air damage, but it pretty much is electricity. If there's a wet spot on the ground, and this is kind of cool for you guys. Alright, if you got two people that can use magic of any kind, I only if you really want to just do a D-bag move, set this ability first, right? If you want to get great control on top of your enemies, right? Then hit with the fire spell with somebody else, right? When the turn comes around, if they're walking on water, hit them back with this spell, electrocute. Which will increase the chance of them being stunned. Even with a magic armor check, you can negate that if they're standing in water and it can stun them. Now, sometimes if the magic armor is really high, they can stop that. But in the case like this, it really works to your advantage, especially early on. So, yeah, ice with this, like hit it. If you're able to create patches of ice on the ground, then hit with a fire spell. Melt the ice if it's able to make contact with the ground. Then come back and throw with a lightning spell. Hit your target, let it bounce around, and electrocute the water, which in turn will electrocute your enemies. Boom! I'm on fire! I might end up doing one class a day. I just see this happening. Alright, so it's already because uh, it's an elf. Warp Seater lets you, and I told you that it eats the dead and it heals you. Gives you plus two in finesse. Far out, man. Far out increases the range of spells and scroll. Again, like any other typical game, elves are usually great with magic. Really, I wouldn't delve too much into this unless um, with Glass Cannon you start combat round with a maximum AP, but magic and physical armor do not protect you from statuses. Yeah, if you're going from long range, do that. I I personally do that. I'm just just me. What else is Ice King? Ice King extra 50% water sand. In addition, the maximum water resistance is raised by 10. All right. Again, another cool thing. Leech. I would use that as well. 
Actually, no, because you would have to be up front. Oh, uh, this is another one I would have used too. Morning person. But like I said, we'll get into that later. Alright, so we'll create this uh, elf. I'm really not going to care too much about how she looks. Sabeel's her name. Accept. Alright, we'll skip the beat. Alright, here we go. So, as before, it's a void, wo void woken or viscous voidling. Alright, so let's start off with. Uh, Alright, let's go with 1860. Alright, so basically, watch. Boom, stun. Now they're held in place. And see the blood on the ground? Now I've been electrically charged. Now, I could wait a turn. Let's see if I can post anything up after that. Alright, because it is water. Pretty much liquid is. Now, this is based off of turns as well. So, and now, if you weren't fighting in combat, but you wanted to set a trap or something like this, and so your enemies could walk across it before they fight you, the thing is, this is not on the turn cooldown. It'll be on real-time or real -time cooldown. So, after, I think after a minute, the electricity goes away, unless you're in combat, then it's based off the turn system. Alright, so here comes Hail Strike. Boom. See that? Not only did I use it to chill itself, but the water kind of, it kind of nullified it, though. But yeah, if it wasn't electrically charged, you could have been able to, uh, hit them a free... What the fuck? Oh, shit. The, ah, uh, you know what it did? Okay, you're all like, John, what just happened? It was iced on the ground. And remember what I told you when you're out of combat, this stuff speeds up because it's not based off the turn system? Yeah, the water, the ice that was there melted and created water, and the water got electrically charged by the eye by the blood here so yeah so actually you know what i do want to do though when this gets done like doing what it does actually here comes a magical armor check check this out see i'm stunned there's no way to beat that uh and there's a timer right here in the left hand corner that'll show you a symbol of what status is hitting you curses i'm stuck yeah i know that so all right if it would hurry up and get her little stinky blue little boat of boat of how all right so actually i'm gonna use the corpse heater ability real quick just for the sake of all right, let's go. That's definitely not what I want. Wait, wait I thought she had corpse eater. Hold on. How do I get corpse? Wait, hold on. Can I do it like this? Oh. How do I lose shame? Oh, is it dead people? Wait, hold on. Is it? Let me go to my skills. How do I use this? What is it? What's her passive? Uh, what's her passives? Uh, I thought flesh. Oh. I swear I thought I had the ability to eat corpses. Maybe it's human corpses. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Now, let's see if I right click it. Nope, nothing. Oh, wow, you can examine them. That's cool. You know what I do want to check, though, real quick, guys? Because now that I've got control of this character like this. Uh, all right, here it is initiative. Initiative affects what spot you will be when the turn order of combat is calculated. Oh, okay, so it's how fast your turn comes around first. Okay, cool. So the higher initiative, actually, that's better. The higher initiative, the quicker they can attack and fire off abilities. And because the quicker they can cool down their own abilities, too. So if you're making a mage, that is smart, or any kind of elemental user. Any kind of class, you probably wouldn't need the high initiative, but I think because their spells, they're not about being up front, they're about holding it in the back and firing from afar, you kind of do need that high initiative. So bear that in mind too, as well. Like I said, this is early reviews, these are just rough sketches of the classes. Uh, I'm off in the next couple of days, so I will be working with some of the classes. Um, I'm gonna, right now, because I don't know how long the game is in its alpha version, uh, I heard it's decently long, but because it is alpha, it's not that long, and they do do wipes, so I'm not like trying to get attached to any characters. But I will provide um, more classes to do or to show you guys. Uh, but other than that, I hope you enjoy. I will keep you up to date. I will go back to playing Virginia. I know nobody was really excited about that video. Shut up, guys! It was awesome. I also got another game. I got like five bucks. I want to try out, try out. It's a thriller or something. I love thrillers. Apparently, I like scaring the shit out of myself and make myself wet the bed. Bro, men can wet the bed, people. Don't you start judging me. But, like I said, if you have any questions or anything at all you want to know about these classes, like I said, again, it's alpha, so the builds are going to change. They're going to do a lot of rework. And, I don't know, other than that, I'll try to keep you guys up to date. And here's another thing, too, is because it's an alpha, I can't really trust that I'm going to have a save file. They're going to do wipes. But, like I said, I will get to you and get to them as fast as I can. Alright guys, without further ado, let's kick it to the outro where I probably say some more dumb shit that I don't want to say in public, but it's just the effect I have on people. Love you guys. Have a nice night. Game Flunky saying peace. Saying peace, 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 peace. Oh wow, I could take a oh I could take a screenshot of it. Hey, is that a conch? That's a, I just picked that up like it's nothing. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, get another screenshot. Work it lady, work it, uh, work it, work it. Uh, I gotta go now. I'm probably just doing a lot of dumb shit. Bye. 
You know, I always wonder what it'd be like if I was born an elf or a dog or a chicken. I don't know. Would I eat myself? Would I eat myself out? That's not the wrong answer. Oh, yeah. Like and follow me. You know the deal. I'm just saying. I don't know. Would I be crispy?